Shut up and sit down. Hello guys, it's Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and Painting Studio and as promised I'm painting one of Dodger's Orcs. So I've pilfered this off his desk and um, I'm doing this as a uh, bit of a different, in a different way to what I would normally do. I'm doing um, I'm all the colours um, base down first and then I'm doing the highlights together rather than my normal sort of method of highlighting as I go along. All paints used in this uh, tutorial are all uh, Games Workshop so uh, they're all going to be familiar names to yourselves, and um, uh, you've got to remember these are regular old boys. There's nothing fancy. You're going to be doing like hundreds of these if you're painting old boys, so uh, you don't have to go to the full levels of um, your ability when you're painting. So the first layer, which was the flesh, uh, I'm going to um, start on that, which was a wire flesh, um, and as always, tooth and coats and all that sort of stuff. You know what you know what we're doing. Uh, get it get it on there. Make a nice decent um, base tone. The fist on red is the uh, core colour for his uh, tunic, and um, I'm getting that but, uh, as neat. I'm being as neat as possible. I'm not doing my normal sort of uh, slightly sloppy base coats. I'm actually being deliberately quite neat so you uh, get a good finish when you first get to the end of the uh, end of the base tones. Rhinox Hyde for his uh, trousers. Uh, I went for that, uh, I wanted to uh, look um, like a pair of leather slacks or something. Um, very sort of dirty and earthy sort of uh, colours, what I was working on there. And the next layer is Eshin Grey for his boots. I didn't want to do black boots because um, everyone has black boots. I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I went for a dark grey. And it uh, came out quite nicely, actually, in my opinion. Once you've got these um, base colours, always make sure you just go around um, through the uh, model itself, um, just to make sure that you've got no uh, overlapping colours. Um, you just want to make sure you've got everything nice and tidy. Uh, the next layer is XV88. Uh, which is a base t uh, base color, so it's really nice and uh, thick. It works really well for uh, going over anything. Now I did do a bit of uh, Zenithal highlighting on the model, but because I'm using uh, purely with the uh, paintbrush and the layers I'm doing are uh, pretty decent, uh, you don't really show through so much, so you don't need to worry about anything like that. And the next layer is what what bronze, which is going around all the um, jewelry. Um, there's a couple of coins there. Uh, obviously he's round his wrists, he's got the wristbands on um, and he's uh, got a couple of earrings and that sort of thing. So all, all the uh, little uh, small details are picked out in Warbot -war Bronze and gets you a nice uh, deep shiny colour. I uh, painted the uh, weaponry in Avalon Black um, to give it a nice deep um, colour. Because, uh, I, I've noticed I mean, GW Metallic, especially the Silvers, Tend to be a little bit iffy. So if you put a base layer of black on first, it just uh, helps the um, paint uh, show through properly. Into his mouth is Screamer Pink, and I'm using that all around the inside of his uh, mouth, getting a decent coat in there. You got plenty of uh, plenty of detail around his teeth, around his gums. Making sure you do go for his gums though, because they, uh, they are quite pronounced. You can see them quite well against the back of his, uh, back against the front of his teeth. Next layer is Carrack Stone, which is going around around all his fingernails, uh, his teeth, um, and you know that sort of thing. Or well, any uh, random little bits and pieces he's got, uh, little trinkets and that uh, are all uh, highlight uh, base painted up in Carrack Stone, and that just brings out the final detail work of the model. And once that, uh, all, all, once the black had um, set, it is lead belcher across all the weapons, and any uh, small bits of silver work will um, be left knocking about, uh, like on the top of the grenade. Uh, the, the actual core of the grenade I painted in black, and I decided I was going to have that as a sort of a, a deep, uh, deep black against the back of his uh, back of his tunic. 
So that's the end of the uh, first step. Now uh, your models actually look pretty decent at this, as, uh, as long as you kept it all neat. Now next is a shading uh, step, which is um, non oil is going across all the black, all the silver, um, the greys, um, picking out the detail rather just lapping it on there. I wanted to, um, I'm aiming the uh, wash into the uh, recesses. Next is Agrax, which is on all the brown stuff. So his trousers, his uh, pouches, um, all uh, around the uh, his fingernails. And if you're feeling um, re really brave, you can get it in between his teeth, but uh, to be honest, you don't really need to. The flesh wash is a BL tan green. Again, um, I'm just slapping it on. Um, I've, uh, I've not even fit in this and it's just going on really nice. It's really sitting well into the recesses. Uh, really, uh, really does work well uh, over the wire grain. It brings out a sort of blue tint, uh, tint to the colour itself as well. So just getting that onto the uh, model, getting it all over the uh, muscle, muscle texture. And last but not least, is Calibre Cruising on the end of the uh, all over his tunic and the inside of his mouth. Now at this stage, um, your arm is pretty much, um, if, if you make an entire squad look like this, they're going to look decent on the table and uh, you'll be pretty much uh, golden for any type of tournament or anything what you want them to do. The next thing to do is highlight it up um, on some of the uh, areas you're using the base colour again, which is on the flesh, wire flesh, and I'm just cleaning up where that um, washer's uh, pulled in places I don't want it to be. Again, using the same sort of consistency as uh, the initial layer, the prime, uh, sort of two thin coat sort of level, uh, level. picking that detail out again, really nicely. The fist on red again, on the red, uh, on his tunic and just uh, again doing exactly the same thing, just uh, using the base colour as the first highlight, just cleaning out all those um, streaked areas where the where washers sit in their places what's just inconvenient. Um, focusing more on the uh, on the actual recesses though, just bringing the uh, edges around the recesses up with, with that fist on red. The next layer is the Measy Desert on the, um, the pouches. Which was a lot brighter than I expected, actually. Uh, I'm not going to fib about that one. Uh, it, did, it turned out okay, uh, but I was I was expecting something a little bit darker uh, when it went down. Um, but hey ho, yeah, these things happen. I, I should have gone back to XV88, but I, I, uh, it was too late at this point. But I, uh, again, just some, just exactly the same method, picking out those um, raised areas, getting the uh, shading in. Dryad bark is on the uh, brown, which is a a very sort of earth tone uh, shade. So it really does go well over the Rhinox hide. And uh, just picking out um, the larger highlight areas now, just starting to um, bring out the, um, the the high spots on the model. Stone vermin for, fur for the boots, again exactly the same sort of idea, You're just bringing out those broad highlights. We're not going for a display level model here, we're just bringing out a nice level uh, model. It's easy to achieve across an army. Um, like I said, these are all points, there's nothing fancy, it's just a dude with a gun and an axe. Um, what you're probably going to have 30 or 40 in a model. So you just want to uh, have them looking decent, easily. Uh, but you can always come back to these after once you've gotten to a nice and neat level. After the uh, Stormburn Fur, it's Hatchet Copper on his um, jewellery, uh, which brings out a nice, rich um, tone over the Wat Wat Bronze. Um, and I'm leaving just a small area of the Wat Wat Bronze to show. You can just uh, about see it, so it brings out a nice level highlight. Shafty bone for the uh, fingernails and the claws and these uh, teeth. Picking out that detail work again, uh, making sure that you're not covering the entire colour or um, uh, base coat. So you want some of that initial base to shine through 
So it does look like they're, um, uh, they're shining in the light. And I did this in a slightly wrong order, but it is what it is. Uh, pink horror on the inside of his mouth. You throw in just like one light of um, highlight in there and around all his gums as well. And it just picks out that last detail work. And as you can see, I'm using a, a very, very fine brush at this point just to make sure I've got the uh, brush control on me to get inside his mouth and not ruin anything else around it. So on the uh, weaponry is Iron Breaker and it makes a very very little difference on this. Um, the, as I've said, the GW paint uh, silvers are not great, um, but I was just uh, trying something out. I wanted to use pure GW paint for this model, as uh, I was just doing something a little bit different to uh, sh show you guys what you can do very, very quickly. Now, all in, at this stage, it'd probably take it, um, if I wasn't waiting for um, drying time, etc., it'd have probably taken about 30 minutes to get to this level. So, not a, not a lot of work. You can have a very nice looking army at a reasonable amount of time. The next level is one stack of red for the uh, first areas of the actual highlights on his tunic. And I'm just um, picking them high spots out and really uh, bringing the uh, light, lighter regions up with the uh, where the creases are with the one stack of red and making an effort to paint around the creases where the um, raised areas are. It just It's a very gentle highlight. Um, it's very, very uh, easy to miss it, but use these gentle highlights, you get a real nice feel, uh, a real nice effect on the model. And uh, it, the highlights seem to blend better. Warboss Green for the skin. Uh, again, again, it's a, a quite a gentle highlight color. Um, and it just brings out the uh, the top areas of his flesh and uh, making it look really, really interesting and really start to pull the uh, model together. So it's, uh, on his uh, pouches it's Baylor Brown, which is a perfect um, highlight over the Zanuzi Desert. It's such a gentle um, transition. It really, really uh, can work work the um, colors together and make them look really interesting without being very, very stark. Very, it's important to um, go for the right shades when you're highlighting. So if you add um, too, too bright a highlight, the uh, model can look very, very patchy. On the uh, trousers, go for brown next. Uh, <clears throat> which again is a very earth tony color. Um, a little bit of pink in there, and it really brings out the uh, highlights from the dry, dry bar, lovely. And it ma makes the um, model look more uh, defined uh, when you go over the dry bar. And it's definitely something worth uh, considering um, when you use any kind of uh, uh, brown work. So I got it the right way around this time. Empress Children into the tongue as a final highlight around the um, around the gums and the uh, teeth and the tongue and that. Uh, real bright colour so be very very sparing with it. You don't want to go too much because it all just look cartoony. Which all already look cartoony enough as they are. Okay onto the uh, jewellery again. Rune of Brass. Now as I've already started doing this, it's a slightly different uh, way to what I would normally go. I've added an extra layer in and I'm just um, pulling them uh, lines in real, real tight so uh, the model sort of blends itself. And if you if, if you are neat um, while painting any highlights and using the nice um, the right uh, step up, the highlights are almost invisible to the naked eye and you just get such a real smooth transition. So it's, with painting something like this, just be neat, be as neat as you can and you get and you get real good results very easily. So on the boots, Dawnstone. Now it's a good highlight again for uh, 
storm vermin fur and it just picks out them final final um, touches around the base of his um, boots and such. Iron Breaker is um, then applied to the upper sections of the axe and um, following the pattern of the axe because it's got sort of a, um, a pattern blade I'm trying to follow that pattern um, around the uh, axe head itself um, so it uh, becomes very defined as I uh, add the highlights to it and Screaming Skull on the teeth to bring them out again that final touch just to make them real pop Now at this stage, I've probably invested a couple of hours into the figure, um, which is far, far too much for a regular old boy. Again, you're talking 30 or 40 of them, so you don't want to be spending too much time on them unless you want them to, to have a real shiny old army. But it's definitely okay for your uh, mobs and squad leaders types, which Dodge will be painting soon. Lies. <sighs> okay, and now we're on to the uh, the final layer of highlights, which is Evil Sun Scarlet on the um, tunic, which is the uh, final highlight for this particular model. Uh, although it's totally doable to go even higher and higher, uh, I kept the um, color palette simple uh, because he is an orc boy, he's not a, a war leader or anything, he's nothing fancy. So I wanted uh, to do things a little bit different and get the uh, model really cool but dead easy. Lauren Forest is the skin highlight for the top highlight. Um, again, we've still got a long way um, we can work. We've got another, we can put as many layers on this model as we want and we can really make him pop. But is there really any need? So I'm just finishing them, uh, that muscle texture with the Lauren Forest and it really brings the final layers out. Steel Le Legion Grab. For the uh, top highlight on the um, trousers, and just to, in the final highlight areas, I'm using that, um, one of my finer brushes now, just to uh, make sure that those uh, highlights are really thin, uh, nice and smooth in the um, highlighted areas already. I'm just pulling out that detail, just to make it really, really thin. Aura uh, Karma Gold on the uh, top of the. Um, jewelry and um, as a final highlight on that and it's, it's very very um, awkward core to use uh, as I was separated so I had to give it a proper good stir and it just it really um, made the jewelry uh, really bright and it got a really interesting effect what I've, uh, because it's a core I've never actually used before I tend to use the Vallejo colours for uh, my metallic work Rune Fang for the, ta uh, the actual top edges of the uh, silver. It's not a dry brush, it's um, kind of an overbrush I suppose. I'm just using a very, very light amount of pressure on the, um, to pick out the detail work on the, on the axe head and the, um, and the gun. Um, with a reasonable amount, with a, a very f small amount of paint on the um, brush itself. And Screaming Skull on his uh, fingernails, just to finally pick out them uh, nails at the end of the, uh, the at the end of his fingers, just to really make them uh, stand out that last bit. And there you have it. Nothing fancy. We've got a very cool looking orc, um, and if you do a squad all like that you will have a very very nice looking army um, however I don't envy anyone painting an army like that because that would take forever um, so best of luck to anyone doing that if this is the sort of thing you like to see um, please hit like hit subscribe share with your friends uh, if there's any questions you want to ask uh, let us know down in the comments below and I shall see you in the next one guys take care and have a good one bye bye